the biggest day of John Kennedy's life to date. Inauguration Day 1961 dawned gray and frigid. 700 trucks were already out on the streets, clearing eight inches of new fallen snow from the east front of the Capitol. As the skies began to clear, 20,000 spectators crowded in to await Kennedy's arrival. And the news professionals hauled a bouquet of cameras onto a temporary structure rising high above the other onlookers. I, John Fitzgerald Kennedy, do solemnly swear that you will faithfully execute the office of President of the United States. And I will faithfully execute the office of President of the United States. It was bitterly cold, and Kennedy made sure, even though nobody knew he was wearing thermal underwear, he made sure that he would take off his top coat. He could show somebody who was vital and young. So help you God. So help me God. When Eisenhower left, at that juncture, he was the oldest man in the country's history to have served in the White House. Kennedy coming in was the youngest man to ever have been elected. And so Kennedy wants to underscore that. He wants to emphasize the new, the, the innovative. Let the word go forth from this time and place to friend and foe alike that the torch has been passed to a new generation of Americans born in this century. Kennedy Kennedy's understood something that is not so obvious, and that is that words are more important than deeds. You can't govern 300 million people or 180 million when Kennedy was president by doing things. You can only do it by rhetoric. President Kennedy was talking to Americans that day and to the world. He meant to reassure historic allies and to exalt the virtues of democracy for new governments emerging in Africa, Asia, and the Americas. He also had a direct and pointed message for Soviet leader Nikita Khrushchev. Let every nation know whether it wishes us well or ill, that we shall pay any price, bear any burden, meet any hardship, support any friend, oppose any foe to assure the survival and the success of liberty. There was enormous optimism. He was young, personable, attractive, he appeared to be friendly and disposed toward people of color. And so there's great hopes that new things would happen. His inaugural speech was how we as a nation are going to be great, the new frontier. He was willing to challenge people. And I think each one of us wants to be challenged. We want to think that our life has a mission. And he understood that and reached out to it. And so, my fellow Americans, ask not what your country can do for you, ask what you can do for your country. first couple glided through a half dozen ceremonials, including a gala produced by the president's friend, Frank Sinatra, showcasing the brilliant sparkle of American celebrity. Jacqueline Kennedy wore white gowns to almost every event, her choice. Inside the gala and the balls, among the colorful and garish gowns, Mrs. Kennedy stood apart. Don't like the high road, I like the low road, free from the grief and strife. Jackie once said that she would like to envision herself 
as a sort of art director of the 20th century, suspended in a chair over everything else and orchestrating how everything would look. Everything was a scene to be staged. People suddenly see this glamorous young couple from the upper class uh, who are almost impeccable in everything they do in public. And we want to be like them. This is the new America. If his youth gave him pause, John Kennedy didn't show it. He appeared to be fearless. He ignored anyone who said it was too dangerous for a president to speak off the cuff. Thank you. I have several announcements to make. And held the first live televised press conferences in the White House. He would keep them up throughout his presidency. Uh, Congressman Alger of Texas today criticized uh, Mr. Salinger as a, quote, young and inexperienced White House publicity man, end quote. <laughs> I questioned the advisability of having him visit the Soviet Union. I wonder if you have any comments. I know there are always some people who feel that Americans are always uh, young and inexperienced and foreigners are always uh, able and tough and great negotiators. Now, he also, as I saw the press, said that Mr. Salinger's main job was to uh, increase uh, my standing in the Gallup poll. Having done that, he's now moving on uh, to... Uh... <laughs> <laughs> to improve our communication.